go over it though. But. Six o'clock, we'll call the committee of the whole meeting to order. The clerk will please call the roll. Marissa? Here. Jones? Here. March? Here. Parker? Here. Ham? Here. Bowden? Here. Approval or occur, approval of the minutes of the October 22nd, 2018 committee of the whole meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, a motion to approve as presented. I'll motion it. Second? Second. Motion by Trustee Marufka, second by Trustee March. Marufka? Yes. March? Yes. Jones? Yes. Uh, Parker? Yes. Bowden? Present. And? <coughs> Present. <coughs> we get Okay. What's that? Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, you know, I mentioned before, um, we haven't had any water main breaks uh, in the last 30 days or since we have one where we actually go over the contractor mm -hmm. name, but my folks knew that I said that, but knock on wood or something. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, <laughs> anytime you talk about water main breaks, oh, I'm just hoping these people get a little tense, especially the people who have to fix them. Exactly. But they're good. Uh, you know, the system's running uh, nicely, and um, uh, we haven't had a lot of... Uh, breaks, a few service uh, issues and stuff, service line issues that people are taking care of, some curb box issues, B box issues, but things that are taken care of really quickly. Uh, you'll notice around town, Robinson is starting the topographical work uh, to do the design for the interconnect for the softened water, like quality softened water from Egyptian Trail. So they're working in town now and they're giving the green light to start the engineering on that, which is really good. Uh, I know our engineers and, uh, and Robinson have been working with property owners uh, so far, we've been very cooperative. Uh, one gentleman said he sent back the paperwork on the easements. Another gentleman, I saw a message tonight that uh, he's good to go and he'll send his, his paperwork. So that's moving along nicely too, and uh, doesn't look like it's going to hold up any design or anything like that. So it's it's exciting. It's good to get that going. So when uh, all this weather's gone, we're digging. We're putting in a pipe so we get that good water up here for residents. So uh, anyway, this this progressing nicely. Any questions on that piece of it? Or? Okay, and then also this week, uh, our engineers are moving forward, uh, meeting with different engineering firms and uh, uh, laying out all of our 2019 capital programs and getting uh, solicit uh, proposals from various engineering firms on that. Uh, one of the items on the list is the interconnection across I-57. So we're going to start engineering on that. And I've authorized our engineering team to do the design, start to initiate the design uh, by the end of the year. Let's get it moving and get that going. So that'll take some time. There's some stuff that goes along with that. And, and easements net of course as well uh, but we will be moving forward with that so that it's ready and sitting there ready to go for the first customer that needs it so more to come on that as we go through it so you know i'm initiating that and getting away and we are going to meet with engineers this week uh, they'll select a firm uh, you know the next few weeks to the month by the end of the year somebody will be cranking that work out getting that going okay um meter exchange program last time i think i gave you the update on the meter exchange program uh, they just went over 300 meters exchanged, uh, the 450 or so, so they're a little over 65 percent done. Uh, appointments slow down a little bit. First, you know, first round you go through, you get quite a bit, quite a bit of what they are kind of slowing down a little bit. Uh, so they're going to send out another letter the first week of December, kind of urging folks to call in and, and get that appointment. I know it's a painful process. You don't want to burden customers any more than you have to, uh, but it's important to get in and get this get this changed and get it fixed. And if there's any issues that come up or any questions that come up, please let me know because uh, it is a bit of a, a bit of a painful process to try to get access to homes. People aren't home, they work, and things like that, and I certainly understand that, okay? Uh, but uh, the third letter will go out, hopefully get some more appointments coming in, try to knock those out by the end of the year. I was really hoping to be done by Thanksgiving, but on the rate they're going, it will, if people have done that, we still have quite a few left to go. So anyway, uh, progress being made, forward momentum every day. Uh, just want to kind of keep moving as fast as we can with that. Um, I did get a few calls. Uh, one thing, just as an item of note, you know, we did get uh, a few calls from customers, uh, you know, questions about pressure. And um, we explained to them uh, that it's the same system, we're operating the same pipes. Uh, the system actually is very good pressure, about 55 pounds, excellent system. Um, so if there are internal issues or things that go along with that, we're instructing our technicians to kind of try to work through that with the customer if they can. Um, I know there's an appointment tomorrow and Nick has with a customer first thing in the morning on pressure and I'm going to engage with them and show them, hey, here's, this, here's the pressure in the system. Um, let's maybe take a look and see if your strainer's plugged or something's changed the meter. Let's do some things. So, uh, you know, I have no doubt they'll do a great job working through it with the customer. But when those things come up, we try to work out on a one-on-one -on -one basis because the system itself is performing as it always has. 
at about 50 to 55 pounds per square inch, and that's really very good. I don't expect that to change, even though we get the new water source, I don't expect that to change. So if there are individual issues, let's work through them now and let's figure them out so customers don't have to have that. What's the maximum amount of pressure you've ever seen? So there's some portions of our system we have 70 PSI. Uh, 70 PSI is about the highest I've seen. Uh, you know, we, we've had some places before where it's gotten higher than that, and then um, you get concerned for customers about too much pressure. Yeah, that's a great problem to have because they can just dial back the booster pump or something like that. A lot of it has to do with elevations, but 70 is about the highest. Risk. And what's point is the, on the low end where it's considered a, an issue? Well, uh, certainly from a public uh, health pers issue, uh, 20 pounds is the lowest you can go uh, without having a boil order. But really, you know, if you get below 40, 45 pounds, people start to notice that. And you know, we do have areas where you know, the elevation of the tower is such that we have 45 pounds of pressure. That's certainly satisfactory. Uh, but 55 is really good. You know, most of our system runs between 50 and 60, just about wherever you go. So there would have been no correlation between that break on Ratchy Road. Somebody, a resident in that subdivision there, said they noticed their water pressure was lower, and I, I mean, there was. It could have been. Um, it could have been for a short period of time. Yeah. Uh, I'm told by our folks uh, when I initially got that phone call that they were really concerned about losing the water tower, but once they really got there, they found that the, it was quite manageable. Mm -hmm. And uh, they never did lose the water tower. So it might have been a slight drop in pressure, but definitely nothing to get down to the 20 PSI where you'd really notice a big drop. So. <clears throat> and I guess they valved it down a little bit by the high school, and they were able to prevent that from happening, you know, throttle it down a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, there shouldn't be anything in the system that happens that should uh, produce a noticeable drop in pressure to customers. Now, I did talk to one customer today, and he said over the last couple of weeks he's noticed an issue. So we'll go float out there and we'll like take a strainer and see if there's something in there. And some iron or rust from the system could have gotten his meter or something plugged it up. We'll look at all those items. A softener, if someone could run by and hit like the softener and maybe hit the uh, you know the valve or something on the softener. So they'll kind of try to walk through it with them and understand that folks uh, you know, know there's been a change that's occurred and might expect something different than was there before. Try to work through them as much as we can. If somebody's not going to be home, they're working or whatever, and they say, hey, I'll leave the back door unlocked, come in and do your thing, lock up when you leave, do you guys do that? No, they won't do that. <laughs> they, won't, they won't do that, but um, they, uh, they should be making the Saturday appointments. And I do know there was a case recently where um, a customer didn't, didn't get to take advantage of a Saturday appointment, and we quickly rectified that. Uh, but they should be making Saturday appointments. A customer has an after-hours need or something. We should be accommodating all of that so that they don't have to, to leave home and let us in, but we're not there. But if you hear situations like that, let me know because you definitely want to be accommodating. <clears throat> I do have one resident that wants to sit down and talk. They're on the well, mm -hmm. and they want to talk about converting over. So we kind of got to figure out that process. I know in the contract, you know, we've allotted for yeah. you know, that to happen. So sure. just got to maybe try to set up a time. I don't know who to set that up with. You know, for the resident, who's the best person to talk to? Yeah, well, let me know. I'll get set up for you. Okay. I'll be happy to get the folks in touch with them, or okay. maybe make a meeting here where they can sit down and explain everything to them and how they sign up for service and stuff like that. Okay. It's at no cost to them, but they can walk them through all that. Okay. I'll make it convenient for them. Good. We have had a few phone calls. Um, so there are a few customers. There's like 20 or 30 customers out there that are sewer only because they have a well, and we do have those. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they might also have neighbors that uh, have called in, we have like 60 people have called in and say, hey, we're on a well too, we're on the village as well, and um, so we shouldn't be charged for sewer. And I think there's a, an education that needs to take place, and we're trying to do that about people who are uh, on their own personal well, right. and those around the village as well. That really is part of the system that they should be uh, charged for. Correct. Um, so we're doing that education as much as we can, uh, walking through the list of those that we're getting calls from. But again, it's just it's our responsibility to educate people on that, make sure they know um, what you know, what kind of utility they have. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, we're working through, you know, my last thing here is working through transition items like that. Uh, again, if you hear things that come up, we want to provide exceptional customer service, and if you hear of something that doesn't align with that, let me know. I want to know that. I want to make sure that that takes place. And um, we'll keep moving and keep transitioning. Good. Any other questions? And just to be clear, there are Saturday appointments available for the meeting. Completely so. clear. And if, there, if there's something that someone hears other than that, I would like to know it because they are Saturday appointments. Yep. And it isn't uh, inconceivable that someone couldn't hear something different. We have a <coughs> bunch of people and a lot of things going on. Um, but 
ultimately they should get that. So if you hear something different, please let me know. The meters you install, do they have any like technology like the comment smart meters where they could see like weekly use, like maybe pre-detect a, a leak or something? <clears throat> yeah, so what we have them set up uh, now for is they have electronic device on them. That if we come back later, uh, we can see hourly information about when they use their water. Uh, it doesn't send out a notice to us that says, hey, this person's using more water or less water. That only comes when we actually read the meter. Uh, but there is a technology capable if someone had a leak or something and they said, well, I've never used that kind of water. So, well, let's go back and look to see. You know, And then we go back and look and say, well, Tuesday afternoon from 10 to 2, we we'll use a lot of water. And they're like, oh, that's when I go by the pool. You're right. Right. That kind of okay. And so um, we're capable of doing that. That's those things evolve, perhaps there will be a day where it'll send a notice or something like that. But for right now, it's more of a look back on what uh, happened with the customer's account. But that's still far better than what... Yeah, so there are three months, have. yeah. People are left questioning, when could I have done this? When right. Use that. Cool. Uh, we had a person not too long ago. It was a really great educational experience. It was in the summertime. It wasn't here, uh, obviously, because it was in the summertime. And uh, she... Uh, was using their, oh, quite a bit of water, like 25,000 gallons a month, and explained to us about it was really not a lot if you're watering your grass and things like that. So she explained about all the zones and everything. And we were going back to these devices, went back to the device and said, okay, let's look it up and see. It's like, boy, every other day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you're using it between like 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And it was her sprinkler system. She didn't realize that she was at work. <laughs> and she didn't realize. So it's um, helpful for the customer as sure, well. Sure, do you see a time when those meters will be able to turn the water on and off like Edison can do remotely, instantaneously? There is that already, there's that technology. Uh, but it's pretty pricey, and the uh, amount of customers, um, you mean as far as like for shutting it off, like they move in and move out? Move in, move out, no pay, whatever it is. Yeah. Where they can do it, or if it's a change in a name, I mean, they can, I don't know, hit the button, I guess, and while you're on the phone with them, you got yeah. power now. The technology is available. Uh, there may be some communities that might be beneficial and cost effective, uh, but most it's not. People don't move as, that frequently to, to pay for that kind of uh, that kind of uh, infrastructure to make that happen. It's, it's fairly pricey in the water industry right now, uh, but it is possible. And some people, some some communities do have that. Um, we still send the truck out. We'll get a reading while we're there. Get a visual to make sure it lines up with what's going on in the system at that way. And somebody moves in and moves out. This is. I apologize for this question in no. advance, but I remember in your in your presentation at the high school, you, you talked about how much water we're going to, your your system is using from Kankakee, and there's, I've had a couple questions of, aren't we going to drain the Kankakee River? Right. Do, do you have those numbers off the top of your head? Or? I do. So uh, our entire system uh, today only uh, pulls out of the river three-tenths of a single percent, not three percent, but three-tenths of one percent of the water that goes by our plant on a given day. Okay. We, uh, we have 4.5 billion gallons of water go past the plant. That's enough water to feed the entire Chicago metropolitan area twice <laughs> in a day. So source water uh, quantity is, ne is never going to be an issue for us. Okay. Uh, our intake structure uh, will take up to 80 million gallons a day. So right now our average daily usage is around 12. Our plant's capable of pumping 30. Uh, but our intake structure in the river itself People of uh, conveying 80 million gallons a day. So we're in a real good spot from a source of supply standpoint. So Pietro's not going to drain the Kankakee River? No. <laughs> well, you can try. Excuse me, that I trust you. We'll try our best, but I, I'm not sure that it will. Okay. Uh, Thank you. We're in a really good spot, source of supply, and water quality standpoint. Great questions. Anything else? Yeah. All right, well, thank you, Craig. Right, I'm always available if you need something, and then um, I'll be back next month with more information. And so, I mean, Craig's been super responsive to me. I, anytime I hear from a, a resident, you know, I just pick up the phone and call Craig, and they've handled, you know, everything, you know, trying to make this as seamless as possible. So. Yeah, I would say, you know, we're a utility, and probably just like in the village, I have the utility too. Things happen, and things don't always work out the way they're designed on paper. Uh, I think it's how you react to that, how you adjust, and that really says the difference. And then, I'll uh, start committing to you, and uh, if you find something that needs to be addressed, let me know. I'll take care of it. Appreciate it. Sound good? All right. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Sure, absolutely. I think um, since we are at 6.15, there's nobody else here for the Committee of the Whole.
I'd like to go into closed session and try to Sorry. knock out um, the closed session. I closed session items for this evening, so we don't have to do it following or during the regular village board meeting. So I need a motion to adjourn to executive session for the purpose of discussing the employment appointment or compensation of the specific employees and also for collective bargaining. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Trustee March, seconded by Trustee Jones. March. Yes. Jones. Yes. Marathka. Yes. Bowden. Yes. Ham. Yes. Parker. Yes. We will go to closed session. <clears throat>